Moses, <coughs> how does Moses make tea? He brews it. I've told you that before. Yeah, he he brews it. How does Moses make tea? He brews it. He yeah, brews so it. What's Very your careful. address in Sorry. six? <laughs> Hebrews chapter six, verse one. Oh. Now, just to make sure, just to do a little, a little recap, we're trying to determine, or we're trying to, to, to give credibility. Right to the idea that works are, are critically important to the veracity of a Christian's salvation, but it does not make them saved. They cannot be born again by their works. It is not the works that God is looking at when we come to Him. He's, he, God is looking at the works of Christ. But after a person is saved... His works then become the thing that give credibility to or really testify to the genuineness of his actual faith. In other words, I came to Christ in 1982, blah, 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 but I've never been to church since 1982. Right, right, right. It comes after faith. What's that? It comes after faith. It comes after faith. It's... It comes immediately after. I mean, it comes part and parcel with your faith. Right. But you don't ever have works before faith. Never. God will not receive you into the kingdom. He will not make you born again yeah. by your works because what does Isaiah 64, 6 say? Can anyone quote that? We have all become unclean. Our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Yep. The key, the key, the operative clause is our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Not our bad works are like filthy rags. Here he says our righteousnesses are like filthy rags. Mm. After, after Adam's sin, we are no longer capable of doing flawlessly, divinely approved, divinely acceptable good works any longer. Our works are good as men measure goodness, perhaps. But it's like if I said to Roland, Roland, is your shirt clean? And maybe you pulled it out of the drawer before you came here, Right? And uh, he said, yeah. He just answered me, yeah. That would be an honest answer. Yeah, my shirt's clean. And I said, take it off for a minute. I have a microscope here. I'd like to examine your shirt. And you're like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's not that clean. Not that clean, right? If I have to use 500 power magnification, if it stayed in bleach all night long, I'm going to get to some dirt. The same way with our righteousnesses. Once sin entered the picture, and Adam and Eve had children... Right? We are the offspring of sinners. And it touches everything we do. So that God says very truthfully and accurately, <clears throat> even our righteousnesses are like filthy rags to Him. Because His eyes see immediately all of the impurities and all of the shortcomings in everything we do. So therefore, <clears throat> our works are called in one place in the Bible, dead works. In other words, they're impotent. They're unable. Like if I use the term, although you've probably never heard it before, dead money. Right? If I took something from the civil, currency from the Civil War here in the United States and tried to pay a bill with it, right? One of those big old fat, uh -huh. you know, and you look at the paper and it looks like, um, it looks like, uh, in the paper. Right. <laughs> exactly. It's dead money. In other words, it has no potency. It has no power um, to, to, to pay a debt, either public or private. It's lost its potency. It's the same thing with your good works. Your good works, if offered to God in, to pay for the past sins that you've committed, they're impotent. They're unable to help you in any way. So Christ, knowing that, right, Roland wasn't here uh, for the previous Bible studies, and he wasn't here uh, for the funeral yesterday. So I'm going to just take one quick second and tell that little baseball story I do once in a while. Um, if, if, let's just say, Roland had a son, and I'll use you an example. You had a son four years old. He comes, he comes home from school one day, and he says, Daddy, I want to go play baseball with my friends. And you say, fine, but I don't want you to go and play near the rich man's house. Well, as soon as he leaves the house, his friends convince him that's the only place to play. 
and a half an hour later the phone rings and it's the rich man. He informs you that your son just knocked a baseball through a $3,000 custom window. Now he's four years old, he has no money, and he has no job, and you're his dad. What are you going to do? Fix the window. <laughs> right? But you didn't do it. Exactly. So, in Isaiah 9-6, right, yeah. it says, Unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. We all know that text because we hear it at Christmas time. Who's that referring to? Jesus. Right? And then it says, And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Counselor. Mighty. the Mighty God, the what? Everlasting Father. Everlasting Parent. The everlasting wow. Father. Jesus is not God the Father. No. Mm -mm. No. But this text is telling us that there is a fatherly dimension to his coming. Ah. So a parent who knows, like you knew, all I had to say to you was, 